Hello, my fellow gears. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Daily Permission 2. Last time we met a nice gentle giant, and I kind of forgot what his name was. And Dewey. Now here's some real Cajun cuisine. The way these sausages are linked up, they almost look like a serpent. It sounds like it's a little wild. Let's change that down a little bit. But it's hard to imagine them flying. Let's move on, Zach. Okay, um... There are torn off claws and legs scattered all over the ground. I doubt they'll. F I can't tell which ones are from crawfish. How about you, Zach? Not really. Holy Trinity paste. Cans of Holy Trinity paste. Onions, bell peppers, and celery. The absolute basics for any Cajun dish. So that's why I don't like Cajun food. Bring this closer to me. I freaking hate onions and bell peppers. This product combines them all into some sort of paste. Oof, people actually buy this garbage? Even the name sounds idiotic. <laughs> Zach, I just made an eternal promise with myself. If I ever happen to come across any food prepared with this paste, I vow to never call it Cajun food. There you go. Shiny! Black bass scale. So we need to figure out what the flying serpent is. Frozen oysters. Personally, I'd rather have a cocktail filled with fresh ones. We hunt for more materials than we can eat and freeze them over long periods of time. Yeah. The human race gives terror a whole new meaning. Took you long enough. Avery, this box looks special. Clocks and food, hmm? For their home. Melvin, is this the Clarkson's family crest? <laughs> oh, the dragonfly? Yeah, that's the Clarkson's mark, all right. It ain't no big deal, though. You can find those all over town. Is that so? Well, yeah. They pretty much run all of this town's major industries. Yeah. <laughs> and I do believe they own just about everything there is to own. So their word is law. Not so fast, my friend. They got the whole darn town tattooed with their dragonflies. They can't even walk a few steps without seeing one. Well, that kind of happens. Zack, this dragonfly is our flying serpent. You do not see that on the helmets at all. Like... The flying serpent owns this town. They're related to Lise Clarkson, our victim. And Hoongan's oracle pointed us toward their family crest. The Clarksons must be deeply intertwined with this case. Melvin, Patricia, I think I've had enough of this frozen world. Let's head back out to that merciless sun. Well, what are you waiting for? I can't bear to spend another second down here. So, what do we do now, Mr. York? Zack and I will take things from here. Uh, then what should I do? Tend to your sick wife? I don't know. You're free to do as you please. I'll stop by the sheriff's office when I need your help again. I suppose that's what I'll do then. It'll sure make Candy happy. <laughs> but I am the sheriff of this town, so I do intend to get some work done. I know. How about I search for Lisa's body while you're busy? Not a bad idea. Just be careful that you don't get attacked by a barefooted giant. Hey, don't scare me like that. Uh, Why do you keep talking about that giant anyway? You really think some giant was responsible for all this? Melvin, don't be silly. Of course I do. Wait. Just when I thought you were starting to catch on. Disappointing, to say the least. But how can you be so sure? I want to see some proof. Proof number one. The footprints that led up to where Lisa's body originally was were made with bare feet. None of the prints looked similar to those of common insulated boots, and the arches of the feet were visible. The person who carried out Lisa's body must have had very large feet. I'd say they were at least 16 inches. Proof number two. I found fingerprints on the cord of one of the hanging lights in the warehouse. The fingerprints weren't aimed up from below. They were coming directly from the side. Clearly, the giant moved the light because it was in his way. He pinched the cord with his fingers. Proof number three. 
there was nothing else found in the vicinity where Lisa's body was stored. This means the giant carried her out without dragging her across the floor. But there's only one set of footprints. The only conclusion I can draw from this evidence is that a barefooted giant, standing over 10 feet tall, carried Lisa's body out. That concludes the entirety of my proof. Any objections, Melvin? What? But there ain't no way a human could ever be that tall. Have you seen every human alive with your own eyes? There's never been a 10-foot human, though. Well then, you need to forget all your preconceived notions when embarking on an investigation. Whether you come face to face with a 10-foot giant or a skeletal gentleman. Wait a minute. You always need to accept everything that comes to you with a clear mind. Do that, and eventually the truth will reveal itself to you. You're a smart kid. I'm sure you understand. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Mr. FBI Special Agent, sir. Uh, <laughs> A sharp eye and flawless observational skills. Uncovering the truth with a heady intuition. Sounds like deadly premonition. I won't ever question you again. Heck, I'll do whatever you say. That's it, Melvin. I'm glad you finally caught on. Okay, time to go, Patty. You know this town well, so I'd like you to accompany me from now on. P Patty? Yeah, better than CLG. Zach, we found the Flying Serpent. Now we simply need to locate the Ten Maidens. It's time to head on to Alexis's diner and lane. All this game. Alright, so I'll meet you guys there. Alright, so I noticed red dots everywhere going through here. And it's kind of interesting because they're just random squirrels of all things. So, I'm really curious about that. Alexis's Donner and Lane. Alexis, uh... Patty, is something wrong? I got something to say. Okay. When I first met you in the hotel parking lot, you mentioned Saint Rouge, right? If you want to find it, maybe you should track down Professor R. Professor R? Yeah. Professor R owns the jazz bar on the other side of the bayou. How do you know that? Because. Because, no. huh? Interesting. Yeah, something's been unlocked. Owl's Nest? Oh, we're here for this. Well, this is a nice little place. There's literally one lane. Un lane -o. Bowl and granny! I remember that. Why are we so intent of her bowling? Ten maidens, Zack. Let's topple their hourglass figures and complete this oracle once and for all. Oh, my lord. I don't believe I've seen you around here before. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but you can't smoke in here. No. Since you're with Patricia, I'm guessing you're some friend of Melvin's. He's Agent York from the FBI. This is Alexis, the owner of this restaurant. I'm helping out Agent York in his investigation. We signed a contract. Oh my lord! Well, ain't that something? Jawawa. J I'm, good. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone's always called me that. Oh my lord! Well, that's got to be the strangest introduction I've ever heard. No wonder everyone in town's been talking about you. Pat. I want to 
want a chocolate sundae, but no cherries. I want two wafers instead. Yeah. Don't put too many Rice Krispies on it. Oh, but don't scrimp on the chocolate syrup either. <laughs> oh, my Lord. And what'll it be for you, honey? Alexis, are these photos of the town? Oh, you like my pictures? My hobby's collecting snapshots of what a town used to be like. So whenever someone gives me an old picture, I just put it up here on display. Our world these days feels a bit cold to me, you know? Just thought it'd be nice to help folks remember what it was like in the good old days. Zach, did you hear that? The good old days. Even in a remote town that's already far behind the times, there are still people who yearn for the past. She told me what was going on, you know. What? Lise, you don't need to try and hide it from me, honey. Last time she came here, she told me all about it. Wait. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. What kind of fellow? She said he had a really tall shadow. How tall? As tall as an oak tree. Uh-oh. Did that ring any bells for you? Sadly, it didn't. I know just about everyone in this here town, but I ain't never seen a man who stands that tall. Maybe it really was an oak tree, and she just mistook it for someone. Sometimes the silhouettes of them trees, with lots of Spanish moss hanging down, make me feel a little funny, too. I don't think so, Alexis. Lise said the shadow was following her, correct? That means she must have been stalked by a man as tall as an oak tree. If she had only mistaken an oak tree for a person, she wouldn't have described it that way. She might have said, hmm. It felt like a crowd of people was staring at me. Yes, exactly. She certainly wouldn't have talked about being followed by someone. Thank you, Patty. Zach, this data is all very intriguing, but it isn't the answer we're looking for. We came to knock down the Ten Maidens, remember? Oh, yeah! Booyah! Oh, I got a turkey! Truly mesmerizing, Zach. This is why I never tire of small-town investigations. Same goes for you, right? Yeah. All right, how I want I want to play. A voodoo doll? Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, howdy, stranger. My, you're a handsome one. You came out here from the city, didn't you? I can always spot you city folk from a mile away. But what's your first name? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Would you mind calling me York, ma'am? Oh, so you are from the FBI. <laughs> I thought as much. So sophisticated. <laughs> well, my horoscope in the paper today told me I'd be meeting someone new. And those horoscopes never miss. They are the real deal. Oh, no. One even predicted when I'd bowl my first perfect game. Oh, no. Oh, could you stand a bit closer to me? Whew, that was a close one. If you move any further that way, you'll cast a shadow over the lane. Well, the sheriff did that once, and something horrible happened. The next time I bowled, I got a gutter ball. First time in 12 years, I was mortified. And I am going to make sure nothing like that ever happens again. <laughs> In our world, some routines lead to good things, while others only lead to the bad. So, you mustn't ever cast a shadow over the lane. Is that understood? It's her routine, Zach. Understand? No. Just like us and coffee. Incidentally, ma'am, would you mind letting me use this lane, too? I'm investigating the Lise Clarkson murder case. And I need to topple ten maidens, no matter what it takes. No, absolutely not. 
Not even the FBI can take my lane from me. I haven't given it up once ever since my husband passed away over a decade ago. I'll never break my promise to him. But... Now, if you'll excuse me... Her That's voice what I'm up. talking about. Who's your mama? <laughs> Zack, it looks like negotiations have failed. Now I'm afraid we have no choice but to force her to let us use her bowling lane. Yes, I know. I won't do anything illegal. Force her to get out the lane. Uh, you can just flat out walk on the. Patty, what do you think? Agent York, if you're fixing to bowl, you're gonna be disappointed. Mrs. Carpenter never lets anyone else use the lane while she's here. Patty, that's exactly what I came to do. You see, Zack and I need to bowl down ten maidens. Fine. Go on and try if you wanna. But I'm gonna eat my sundae. <laughs> hey! Are you nuts? What's the most addictive drug in the world? How should I know? It's sugar, Patty. Far more people die from obesity and diabetes than from cocaine and heroin. Sure. Alexis, would you give her some milk? Oh, my lord. Coming right up, honey! Sugar might be dangerous, but it ain't against the law. You got no right to take that from me, even if you are some FBI agent. Actually, Patty, I do. We signed a contract, remember? I promised to protect you from all the evil in our world. Hey! Ooh. Mm. Delicious. What an amazing chocolate sundae. Zach, I think we just uncovered an incredible treasure here. I feel like I could eat one of these every day while we're in this town. Oh. It's not what we're here Just for. Just hurry and can't stand being inside this place without a chocolate. Don't worry, Patty. I'll... You just wait here and drink your... Meh. Nah. I wonder what his pro her promise was. What'll it be, honey? Wait, Is I can... this place a... Oh, my lord. What's wrong, honey? Can't tell the difference? It says restaurant right there on the outside. And how do you explain that, then? That's so the customers can bowl while they eat. Convenient, ain't it? <laughs> if you want to bowl, honey, you'll have to ask Mrs. Carpenter to open up the lane for you. But if you just want to eat, then all you need... <laughs> oh. Well, that's some good stuff, but... Come back in. You ain't gonna find... So I gotta find a way to get her moved. Do I just talk to her again? Excuse me, Mrs. Carpenter. Stop! Not now! Can't you see I'm already in my bowling stance? What, are you blind? Holy mother of bowling balls, let me pick up this split. Holy mother of bowling balls, let me pick up this split. Holy mother of bowling balls. <laughs> what the heck? Always works on a split. Oh, yeah, it never fails. <laughs> Zach, our new friend, appears to be a very superstitious lady. We should try and utilize this trait of hers in order to gain access to the lane for a bit. That was an amazing shot, Mrs. Carpenter. In fact, it may have been the most amazing shot I've ever seen. 
Speaking of which, where did you happen to find all those neat little items? The ones you used to help you bowl that split just now. Ooh, you got a keen eye there, Mr. Special Agent. Taken a liking to my collection, have you? Oh, yes. A great liking. I buy all my charms and power stones from Erzuli Frida. Say what? Erzuli Frida. What? Yes, it's a mystical establishment run by the Mirror. The Mirror? The Mirror? If you're interested, I can mark it on your map for you. I guess I am now interested. Zack, this is it. Erzuli Frida. There must be a treasure trove of dubious trinkets on sale there. We may even be able to find something capable of changing her mind. It really feels like we're in the deep south now, doesn't it? No. Okay. So... I'm supposed to go there. Okay. I mean, if you say so, game, I'm a bit, uh... Baffled by that call. Oops. I'm fast as boy. This is the only problem I have with this game so far is just the over long loading times. Like the fact that I'm going 30 seconds a piece just going in and out of areas. Bit of a concern. I love the whistling thing, so in Deadly Premonitions. <laughs> is Zoo. Is. Erzurly Frida? A voodoo shop. It's a voodoo shop. Just looks like a dumb souvenir shop to me. Of course it does, Patty. What? You're much too young to understand the true value of such a place. How do you do the voodoo that you do? So was the mirror gonna be hun- Ah, uh, freak. What's his name? This is all kid stuff. It's just a bunch of charms. I'm allowed to watch TV and go on the internet, but I ain't allowed in here? My daddy makes no sense sometimes. You agree, <laughs> right, Agent York? This is all just kid stuff. Look at this, Zack. All the mysticism of the Deep South gathered up into one quaint little shop. This is a hundred times more exciting than the FBI evidence vault. It's a vast treasure chest. So much to study, so much to learn. Defeated yet again. What? Thou art a seeker, and I see the object of thy desire. This guy in here. How long has he been there for? Doth this be what thou seekest? What? It's I could sell it to thee now. Get her with a top hat. And only now. Surely, fortune shall not bless thee with another chance. Purchase this, and know that thy wishes shall be granted. Oh, I'll get some buying an alligator with the top hat. That's crazy. Even I can tell you're getting cheated, Agent York. I disagree, Patty. 
This person can be trusted. I've what? been studying people for quite a while, so I can tell. That figurine is connected to our future. Huh? My price is true. What say thee? Really? Why are there so many guns here, too? I have to buy the alligator. <laughs> I'll buy it. Thou art a man of refined taste. I am loath to part with it, but twould be a fool's errand to keep it from such a keen-eyed soul. What's wrong with you? No normal person would ever buy a piece of junk like that. Not even at a garage sale. Marvelous, isn't it, Zack? What a treasure. I can't wait to use it. <laughs> use it? Where? How? Isn't it obvious, Patty? I'm going to put it in front of Mrs. Carpenter's house. In front of her house? Yes. I'm sure this figurine will stop her right in her tracks. And that'll give us a chance to finally topple the Ten Maidens. Are you serious? Of course I am. And so is Zack. I am? Aren't you? No. I'm seriously wondering if I should quit helping you out with this. I have to wait till 23. Yeah, side quest. Okay, that's a good idea. Next time on Daily Premonition 2, Daily Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, let's tackle our first side quest since we have to wait 14 hours anyway. I'll see you then.